this is the rifle you're looking for. And welcome back to Affordable Optics and Rifle Reviews. This week we're going to be reviewing the Bergara B14 HMR. In this video we're going to be reviewing the Bergara B14 HMR. Now this rifle scope pretty much caters to those who want to do hunting and matches. So the hunting match rifle, HMR, that's what the abbreviation stands for. So why? So it's got a medium contour barrel. It's got a really, really nice stock, a super smooth action, an adjustable trigger. It takes AICS magazines. It's got a threaded barrel, which we got topped with a core brake V3 muzzle brake. We'll get on more on that in a moment. So this rifle really has everything that you're going to want for hunting and shooting matches. We have an extended bolt knob, and I mean, this rifle really does have it all. So at an MSRP of around $1,150 US or $970 US retail or $1,500, $1,600 Canadian, this rifle does hit all the stops for the person who just wants that rifle that can just do it all. So I bought this rifle about six months ago and so far I am not disappointed except for in one thing, which we will get to that shortly. So uh, for the purpose of this review, we topped this rifle off because it has a uh, threaded barrel. We have it with a core brake V3. Now the core brake V3 is pretty darn beefy. Now you might be thinking, well, why would you even want a muzzle brake on a 6.5 Creedmoor to begin with? Well, for a few reasons. First of all, I don't really care much for recoil. Muzzle brake like this does an amazing job at reducing recoil down to almost a 223. So if you're like me and you just don't feel like having recoil, the Core Brake V3 can do a great job at pretty much eliminating that. In addition to that, it does maintain the rifle's accuracy. So a lot of the muzzle brakes will affect your barrel's accuracy. So this one, I mean, I did my load development before putting the muzzle brake on and then I did the filming footage with it on, which we'll get to that in just a moment. I mean, it did a great job. Uh, it also does eliminate muzzle rise and rifle torque. So muzzle rise, when you're shooting long range, you know, even off a bipod, your rifle typically jumps and then you lose sight of the target. Whereas with this muzzle brake, you pretty much are on that target the whole time. Even in the recoil, you can spot those hits or misses if you need to. It also reduces muzzle flash and dust signature. So uh, this is a really, really nice muzzle brake if you're looking at picking one up. Let's get to the accuracy of this rifle. So this barrel is a button rifle honed barrel. So that we should expect with that some really, really good accuracy. Now let's head out to the range and make sure this rifle is accurate. So for the purposes of the, this review, we are gonna be using the Rydon X5 Conquer, a fantastic scope for those of you who are looking for a long range or PRS rifle scope. It has 70 MOAs with an internal adjustment or 22 mils, 10 mils per rotation, a zero stop illumination, off, off settings between each settings, 5 to 25 magnification, HD glass, this scope has it all. Uh, so anyway, if you're looking at picking one up, I will leave everything in the links in the descriptions below. One more thing before we get to the range, I know I'm stalling here, uh, we did replace the trigger. So I was a little bit disappointed with the trigger, spoiler alert, and we had to go with a Trigger Tech Diamond. Now this thing goes down to about four ounces, which is extremely light. Like you breathe on it, it goes off, which was just a bit too light for my preferences. But the Trigger Tech Diamond, the trigger you're gonna want if you want the ultra light, like match trigger. This is not gonna be drop safe if you have it on four ounces. Anyway, let's get out to the range, 100 meters. We got the load development done, which I'll be honest, mostly through this load development, it was not particularly impressive, which I was kind of disappointed until I finally got the right load, which usually the case, but usually I find it a little bit easier. So today we got our standard Bergara magazine, which I mean, these things go in like, like they are made for one another. No matter how you throw it in, it just wants to fall in the right place and clip. This is pretty darn amazing. It also takes AICS magazine, which I'll show you in just a moment. So these are neck size, so that might be why it's a little harder to close on some rounds. A little harder to open on some rounds. Now 
if you ask me, that's a pretty damn nice group. <laughs> that's something you can be proud of. Alright guys, so we're at the range. We are at 750 meters or 820 yards. Now we are doing something a little different. We are trying the Tacticam uh, LR spotter cam with our Air, uh, Athlon Ares uh, 15 to 45 spotting scope. Let me know what you guys think in the link in the description below. If you want me to continue like this, I want to know what you guys think. So let's see if we can hit the big gong and then the little ones. Nailed it. All right, so we're right above our black dot. Let's see if we can get a couple more hits on there. I really want to make sure I'm dead on before we try to get those little guys. Nice. We're pretty close. Might be a little bit on the right edge or right side. We're actually pretty consistent. Those three shots, I was holding the same point of aim. So if you can see that, I think I need to dial maybe a little bit to the left. I'm gonna say eesh, one, maybe two clicks at most, and my elevation, I'm gonna keep it about the same. So I think that's enough for the big gong. Let's try banging those little ones. They're gonna be a little bit more of a challenge, but this is gonna be fun. Oh, we're just a little bit low. Oh, I'll say hold the same point of aim. Haha, -ha, beautiful. Beautiful. Hit it for the second time. I hope that footage looks as good as well it does for me. Now in terms of glass quality, so we have the X5 Conquer on this rifle and I can tell every hit on steel there is no questions as to where I'm hitting on this steel. So if you're looking for really quality glass, this is pretty much at the price where you get that quality. So let's put a couple more rounds down range just for fun. For the record, I am aiming for the little guy. Oh, holy crap! Oh, holy crap! Okay. I... Okay, I have so far only hit that teeny tiny four inch steel gong about, I think five times so far at this range. And today's the sixth time, so um, yeah. <laughs> Whenever I hit that one, it's it's a damn good day. So for accuracy, they definitely did deliver on that sub MOA guarantee. Now, this is after load development, but before playing with bullet seating depth. So I still do have one more step that I can do to make sure this is even more accurate. For accuracy, it definitely delivers where it should. We're gonna give it a five out of five. Next, we have the barreled action. Okay, so the barreled action honestly is Bloody fantastic. I'd say this is very, very close to the Tika T3X varmints. Now I have three of those, which almost make me seem like I'm biased, but this one, I'd say it's pretty much on par. This thing is like buttery smooth. I mean, I don't even have any oil or grease in this thing to make it any smoother. It's just, it's like it's on ball bearings. I really do like it. Additionally, the bolt lift isn't particularly heavy either. So for flinging rounds in and out, this is going to be really, really nice. Additionally, it does have an extended bolt knob, so it just makes it that much bigger and that much easier to lift and extract. So, uh, I mean, really, I, I'm really, really impressed with their barreled action. Uh, additionally, with this barreled action, part of the solution, part of this whole thing is going to be a good magazine. So they do need a very good magazine to go with this. And they went with the AICS type magazines. Well, it does come with this polymer Magpul type one. And one thing I've noticed is Pretty much no matter what, this this magazine is like, it just wants to go in the right place. Like I, I have many other chassis rifles and 
I can't get the magazines in as easily as I do in this one. This one just plops right in no matter what I do. So for PRS, if you need to do mag changes, oh, this thing is fantastic. I, I, I haven't seen any uh, from, from the ones I've seen so far that are as easily like just clips in so nicely. Also, we haven't had any failures to feed, any failures to eject. This thing is is like bulletproof reliable. So, uh, so far, I am definitely impressed with the Bergara B14 HMR barreled actions. Also, one thing to note is this is a chromoly steel. Now, if you were maybe looking at the Bergara HMR, I think it's the premium, the pro, there is a slight difference. So they do use a slightly different receiver and they have a different trigger in their on their barreled action. So that's one of the minor differences uh, between the, the Bergara B14 HMR and the B14 HMR Pro. So maybe it's gonna be worthwhile, but then again, maybe not. I mean, this one is pretty darn accurate and I still have a little bit more load development to do to get this thing like super fine tuned. So already, you already have this. I'm, I'm really thinking you're gonna be hard stretched to get a little bit more. Okay, so for the barreled action, I'm 100% going to give this thing a five out of five. They did a fantastic job, like great job, Bergara. Next, we have the trigger. Oof, this one was a meh, okay? Now we have all of this and we got this meh trigger. It really feels like they just gave up halfway. Sorry, Bergara fanboys, <laughs> if you guys are out there. Um, the trigger on this thing was, was a little disappointing, so. It's also pretty inconsistent with its pull weight. So uh, between 2.6 to 3.2 at the lightest weight, uh, and that's a pretty big variation. It's pretty much always somewhere between there whenever I'm using it on my trigger pull, pull gauge. So it, it's really not that consistent. Now for a newer shooter, if you want a rifle that can do it all, having a meh trigger isn't gonna make or break a shooter. And I mean, the, the trigger is gonna be fine for pretty much most people. But for those who really want a really nice trigger, Unfortunately, in my opinion, this one is not it. Uh, it is adjustable, like I said, at the lowest 2.6 to 3.20, like, and that's at the lowest settings. And at the highest settings, uh, it can go as high as four, and it goes somehow as low as 3.5. I kind of get it everywhere in between there. So uh, in my opinion, it's not the most consistent trigger, which is exactly why we went with the Trigger Tech Diamond. Now, this is a trigger that you're going to want. If you want this rifle, and you want it to be perfect, you're gonna to wanna to probably drop that old trigger out of it and throw in the Trigger Tech Diamond. Now this thing can go all the way down to four ounces. Now, definitely you're gonna to wanna to experience a four ounce trigger. Now this is, this is out of this world. You just literally touch it and it goes off. Now this is right now set to about 1.5 pounds, which is exactly where I like it. And I mean, it's so consistent in trigger. Uh, it breaks exactly at the same spot, like there is, no variation in this trigger. You really, really do get a fantastic trigger for that. But if you're a beginner, don't worry about the trigger just yet. Maybe figure that out later. First, you're just gonna want to shoot this rifle because I mean, it can shoot. Okay, so for the trigger, unfortunately, I am gonna give it a three out of five. It's adjustable, it's okay, it's not great. Next, we have aftermarket support. So this is really where the Bergara B14 HMR shines. Now, because it's the, the Remington 700 clone, it has, all the, all, the, the, all the things that the Remington 700 can have. You have rails. This is actually a Remington 700 rail. It goes right on top, no issues, no fitment issues. The stock it will fit a Remington 700. I mean, there, there's just a lot of things you can do to this because it is a better Remington 700. So for aftermarket support, I'm 100% gonna give this rifle a five out of five. This is fantastic. Additionally, one thing, you know, if you were thinking about getting a Bergara B14 barreled action, because maybe this stock isn't for you. I personally really do like it, although I do find the palm swell could be a little deeper. Uh, you can just buy the barreled actions alone and buy a Remington 700 chassis and throw it right in there and you're good to go. Or something like a McMillan or an MDT or a Cadex. You can do that and you won't really have any issues. So maybe that's something you wanna consider if you want a different stock. You just buy the barreled actions right from your dealer. So definitely check that out. Free floated. So is this rifle barrel free floated? It 100% is. At this price, you definitely expect a free floated barrel. Even on Articas that are about they're about $100, $150 cheaper. They're still free floated. Well, up to about here. And after that, they're not. This one is free floated all the way to the action. So it is free floated. Next, we have the stock. Okay, guys. So this stock is actually really, really nice. Uh, other than one thing that I mentioned, it doesn't really have a very 
deep palm swell, which I would have really preferred it has if it had a little bit more of a kind of indent in here. But it does have a nice place to rest your thumb up on here, which I found was really nice and, and comfortable. It has an adjustable comb height, very simple to adjust. You simply lift, twist, and it's locked. You can put more spacers in it if you need a longer length of pull. Like myself, I always have actually a hard time finding long sleeve shirts because my arms are so darn long. <laughs> and uh, with the spacers on here, I'm totally comfortable with it. So as I mentioned, the stock, uh, well, the action does take the ICS magazines. Uh, it does have this little paddle thing here to release the magazine, which is actually very convenient to relief. So it's, it's very well designed for, I'd say, the, the hunter, the mat shooter. It's really, really nice. It does have these swilling swivel studs, which, oh, they're on both sides. So yeah, right here and right there, which, I mean, you have them on both sides. It's exactly the same place. Now you're probably noticing this uh, one has a pick rail on the bottom, right here. Uh, so typically you don't have a pick rail here. I actually removed the, uh, just the sling studs that were underneath. I threaded in this uh, Area 419 um, rail on it. So it's actually fitted for, various spacings and it comes with the little screws that'll fit the threads perfectly. So if you want to put a really amazing bipod, maybe you have an Atlas, maybe you have a Kidex Falcon Light, this one is really, really nice, and you want that, that good bipod on this rifle, you can do it. So definitely check out the Area 419 rail if you want to outfit your um, Bergara B14 HMR with a good bipod that needs a uh, pick rail. So that's what I did and I mean, you can really preload this. Unfortunately, I didn't get to do that before I went to go do my long range shooting. So <laughs> the, the, the rail arrived after. So, I mean, now I get to use it, but the filling's done. So <laughs> anyway, it makes it really, really nice. It just opens up a few more uh, opportunities for this, for this stock. Anyway, sorry, uh, back to the stock. So in my opinion, I would give this stock a solid five out of five. I mean, we're talking a thousand six hundred or a thousand five hundred dollars Canadian, where if we compare this to the Tika, uh, I mean, Tibihika may have like a slightly better reputa reputation just because they've been around longer. Um, but accuracy wise, they're fairly comparable, fairly comparable, fairly close. Uh, but this one does come with a really accurate barreled action and a chassis. Whereas if you maybe wanted to do the same out of a Tika T3X, you'd have to buy the, the, the Tika T3X varmint in the plastic stock and replace it with something like a MDT XRS chassis, which you're looking at about $500 more Canadian or about, I think, $400 US. So you're paying out just a little bit more. Whereas this one, just in this package, is a really nice barrel action and a really nice stock. Or we could maybe compare this with a Tika UPR, which actually I have one. We will be doing a comparison video shortly. Well, probably in a month or so. Anyway, stay tuned for that. Subscribe if you want to see it. It'll be out there at some point. So anyway, for the stock, I'm really am liking this. Uh, it's still going to be a five out of five, even if it doesn't have like a deeper palm as well. Little complaints, little complaints. All right, so lastly, the warranty. So I, I did go on the Bergara Enthusiasts, which I mean, is kind of like going to a, uh, a Honda Civic convention and asking if the Civic's good. <laughs> Kind of a dumb idea. But anyway, uh, I, I, people gave me a lot of their experiences. I wanted to know about how their experience was with Bergara customer service. Because uh, the Bergara B14 HMR does have a lifetime warranty, but for the first user only. You cannot put hand loads in this and you can't make modifications. That doesn't necessarily mean you can't replace the stock. I don't think that that wasn't specified actually, but I don't think that would be the case. But they, they don't cover normal wear and tear. So like this scratch that I have on it, sorry, too bad. They're not gonna <laughs> fix that or, or replace that. Uh, that's just not something they would do. It pretty much covers a defects in workmanship and materials. So yeah, and it does have a sub MOA guarantee. So if your rifle will not perform, make sure you test it out with some uh, match ammunition. So either some Sacco or some, uh, some Hornady uh, match type stuff, uh, but don't tell them that you used hand loads because that will void your warranty. <laughs> so, or don't use hand loads. Anyway, uh, that's one thing I do have a little bit of a complaint about towards the warranty. I mean, don't use hand loads. I mean. Really, most of us serious shooters, and I mean, the Bergara B14 HMR is definitely for your serious shooter. And serious shooters typically hand load. I mean, buying match ammunition is bloody expensive. I mean, hand loading is too, but you get a lot more out of hand loading. And I think that's just something uh, that, that, that it shouldn't be there. And this is just my opinion, guys. So I mean, take it or leave it, but it is what it is. Generally, what people said about the customer service, even when I was out of the Bergara um, pages on Facebook, people said the customer service is really, really good. So. Uh, that's a really good sign and uh, I mean, I'm kind of glad, other than the fact that I bought this one used, so I won't get any lifetime warranty, unfortunately. Uh, but fortunately for me, this is not a lemon, unlike the last review we did on the other precision rifle, which we will not name that rifle. 
Anyway, uh, if you guys enjoyed this video, uh, I mean, I really enjoyed doing the review on this one. This was a lot of fun bringing long range shooting. I mean, using the uh, Core Break V3, I mean, this thing does a fantastic job at reducing the muzzle jump, reducing recoil. If you want to turn your, your 6.5 into basically a 223 without any muzzle jump, that's the way to go. And if you're looking for a really, really good glass, the Rideon X5 Conquer is a scope that you will not regret buying. I mean, this thing is really, really nice. It has great quality and it's veteran owned, has really good quality glass. You will be able to spot all your hits and misses up to, I'd say past a thousand meters. So anyway, if you enjoy this video, consider hitting like, consider hitting subscribe, and I will see you in the next review.